Hi, I'm Seamless, and this begins a series of tutorials where I will show you how to use FL Studio from the ground up. To accomplish this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go through the process of making something, making a track, uh, kind of from where, from beginning to end, and sort of identifying what you need to do to be doing the things that you want to do. Um, and that's what the ver overall, the how the tutorial is going to go. Um, what I'm going to do now, however, is kind of do a, a utilitary utilitarian video where I kind of show you, um, I give you some identify, identify what some of these controls are and also help you set up uh, some of your preferences before you actually begin to do things. So by default, FL should are really already be set up to uh, be using your audio device pretty much as you already have it set up. And in, in that if you were to play something, audio would come out really without you having to do anything. The only uh, problem will be is if you have um, other audio drivers that you want to use, it's probably not going to be set up to be using those audio drivers. So the way you do this, you go to the options menu and click on audio settings. And this brings you to the audio settings window. And the input output bit up here is what you want to focus on. By default, it's probably going to be on primary sound driver. Just this is what this is going to be. And this is going to show you as you're going to be playing on your in, in, internal audio device. If you have one, it's going to be playing, um, might even be playing on your audio interface, but it won't be using your audio interface's drivers. So um, to make it do that, what you do is you click on the drop down menu and it'll show you all the various drivers that you have installed if you have any. Um, as you can see, I got a couple going on here. And in addition to that, it'll, it'll, it'll have this here, ASIO for all. If you don't have an audio interface, but you're using your own computer's internal or your laptop's internal sound processor, I suggest using these drivers. Um, there's, a, there's, there's a whole bunch of information about what, what it's actually doing, but it, what, what it will do is it will take better advantage of your system um, in a way that regular audio drivers won't. I, however, am running the... Uh, this is my, my driver for my interface, the PreSonus Fire Studio project. Notice how they're broken up into two devices. There's direct sound devices and ASIO drivers. Direct sound is the Windows uh, driver for for general system audio, and it's not really optimized in such a way to work well with audio processing uh, ventures. ASIO drivers are. And so, you know, you could pick either ASIO for all, which is kind of like a, a catch-all driver solution for whatever device you might have. And then there's also whatever drivers that come with your interface. That's what I'm using here, the drivers that came with my interface. And then it's set up to have the buffer length and um, the, the audio sample rate that my drivers, the device setup is already for. Um, and you can change this here, but you can also change it in your driver uh, interface, uh, your interface's drivers window, and it'll, it'll mirror that in here. So once you have that set up, you're pretty much good to go. Now let's talk about some of these buttons up here. So here, uh, if you look at it, you can see pretty clear, you know, regular things like the time, stop and play, play and stop and record, the tempo, pattern selector, will, they'll, they'll become important later, master volume, master pitch, uh, this is the song position slider, uh, we have a general snap selection for grid and for whatever it has a grid, there's a lot of things that have grids. These five buttons uh, open up the five main sort of windows and objects inside FL. It's the browser window, that's what this thing is. And this is already kind of here by default. Um, and I never really go away with it, but um, one of FL's sort of greatest strengths is that it's very modular. It doesn't have to be here. It doesn't even have to be attached to the side of, of the screen. You can actually just take it off and put it on the monitor if you really felt like it. Same thing with every other window, except for the sequencer. The sequencer is gonna be stuck where it is forever. This is the sequencer. I'm just gonna show you what it is and, and tell you what it's called because we are gonna be using it in the course of creating uh, a short musical and to do. It's the sequencer. This is the playlist. I have a full screen, but it doesn't actually have to be full screen. And in fact, if you're not, if you're using FL for the very first time, chances are you're not going to see it be full screen. But I, I'm just used to having it full screen. It's easier for me to deal with. Same with the piano roll. And the mixer. The mixer is not full screen, but it looks kind of the way it does. But it might not look like this. And that's because if you go to view... We have various objects, and one of the things I don't, I don't, I don't have on is white tracks. This is probably what it looks like to you. I prefer to not have white tracks personally, and it doesn't particularly matter. It's just a visual difference, you know. If you want to use one or the other, we have undo, redo, save as the render button, 
uh, on open a new audio editor, which opens up in Edison, and one click audio recording, which does something similar. And then we have project info where you can name your track and give it various information. This all gets saved as ID3 tags inside an MP3, which is nice. And uh, then the help file. That's all super great. So in the next video, we're going to begin actually creating something and we'll begin to learn how to actually use the software. Let's go do that.